Hello, and welcome to another edition in the Python 3.7 series where we talk about some of the new features um, in the new versions of Python, mainly 3.7 and above. So in the last video, I've shown you how you can use data classes, a new feature in Python 3.7, to orchestrate OOP class creation and do away with a lot of the boilerplate routines when you're creating classes in Python. Uh, some time ago, before Python 3.7, 3.6 even, you can write a Python program And I don't have a old version of Python 3, but uh, this will this will work even if you're using Python 3.5, for example, anything that is before 3.6. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and actually create our own uh, function. We're just gonna call it func, and what this does, uh, we're just gonna print it, and we're gonna print out all the keywords, arguments, and we're gonna print the keys. Okay, so this is our function. Let's call the function with some data. I'm gonna call it a equals to one, uh, b equals to two, c equals to three. And I want you to notice what would happen if we were to call this function. It should just print the keys out, right? But if I show you, uh, the output looks something like that. Now this is completely random, okay? So this is completely random. You see A, C, B, E, D, right? A, C, B, E, D instead of the insertion order that we answered. So it's we answered we inserted it by by A, B, C, D, E. This is the the keyword arguments that we pass into our function. And you will. If you if you want to compare this to how it looks like in Python three point six, so let's open up a new tab and let's say Python three. Now notice that I'm currently on Python three point eight point one. This is my older version of Python. This is the current version of Python, right? If I were to take exactly the same thing, so I'm gonna just create exactly the same functions. All right, and we're gonna pass in exactly the same thing. So func. And I believe we pass in A, B, C, D, E, right? So as long as you're using something above 3.7 or 3.6 in this case, then you should be able to run this. And you should see that the dig the, the keys are actually printed out in the order that you insert them, right? So A equals to 1, B equals to 2, C equals to 3, D equals to 4, and E equals to 5. So if you compare them, then you would probably ask yourself, what is the diff why is it uh, behaving differently between the version 3.7, 3.8 versus let's say 3.5? So why does Python 3.5, um, why does it give you a different kind of output compared to 3.8? Now the reason this is, is because of the underlying implementation. So the underlying implementation in this, uh, is this concept called the compact dig. So it's called the compact dictionary, which has the side effect of preserving the insertion order, right? So this is considered an implementation details in Python 3.6. Yeah, now you, if you actually want this behavior, you will need to use something called the audit dict. So the audit dict, if you want insertion order that's guaranteed across other implementations of Python. As of Python 3.7 and above, this is no longer an implementation detail and instead becomes a, a language feature. So dictionaries in Python are now insertion order. Okay, so for example, I can go ahead and create a dictionary. Let me clear all of this. And let me go back in and type Python 3 again. Uh, clear out the screen. Now, if I create a dictionary, dig1, and whoops, dig1, and we're going to give it uh, a, a key of a. We're going to create a few more. So b, do c, 3 and D4, right? Uh, maybe the last one, E5, right? Now, if we're gonna create this dictionary, remember we have all of this as a keys for the dictionary. So what we can do is we can say K for K in dict one dot keys. Oops, put some space between them. And then using list comprehension, we'll print that out. Now this is, very, this is gonna be a completely different behavior if you were to do the same thing in let's say Python 3.5. So I could go into Python 3 and 3.5 and I could actually go ahead. Um, I don't mean to copy that, I mean to copy this instead. So I'm gonna do that. And then we're gonna say, let's do the same thing K for K in the keys of our dictionary. So if I run that, you see it now prints A, C, B, E, D, right? So this is a, a difference in behavior. In fact, I've gone ahead and actually um, found ourselves a browser and I'm gonna go into 
you look at the documentation, and I'll paste the link right in the description. Um, this is Python's official docs. It, it will tell you that it changed. Uh, you notice this part that says change in Python 3.7. Dictionary order is now guaranteed to be insertion order. So it, it's guaranteed to be in the order in which you insert them, right? The behavior was an implementation detail um, of C Python from C 3.6, and now it's a it's a language feature. All right. So this is what it says essentially. And if you, in fact, if you use Python 3.8, it now also tells you that your dictionaries are now reversible, right? So essentially, it allows you to do something like k for k in dig1 but instead of doing that we're going to actually say reverse and we can say dig1 dot keys like that and it will give you e d c b a now if you were to try and um call this on if you're trying to use a, a an older version of python let's say python 3.5 3.6 and you try and uh, do the same thing you'll get a error Okay, so to show you that, I'm going to open up this 3.6.2 and I'm going to execute exactly what I have uh, on my machine. So I'm going to go ahead and create a dictionary. So this is how a dictionary looks like. Drag this across. And then I'm going to go ahead and actually get the reverse code in here. And let's see what happens first, right? So let's execute that. And you will see here that it says that the dig keys, sorry for that, let me drag it here. It says the dig keys is not reversible. And that's because you're using an older version of 3.6.2, uh, right? If you use a a later version of Python, 3.8 and above, I'm I'm fine because I'm in uh, Python 3.8.1, okay? So that is also um, another one of those things that uh, uh, that newer versions of Python give you, you know just give you right off the box and you don't have to implement it on your own ways um, using your own code, right? So how is this interesting or why is this interesting or rather maybe what, how am I using this feature in my own projects so I'm gonna now move my screen into my workplace and I'm gonna show you how this is actually um, how this affects some of the the, uh, the design patterns or how you uh, design your procedures in, in your code and let's uh, take a look at, the, at, at some live code rough in X, dictionaries are the underlying data structure, and since I'm on pattern 3.7 and above, now I know that there is a guarantee on the insertion order, we just learned about that. So I get to rewrite some of the graphing procedures to take advantage of this. Now, in this case here, if you look at my code, so what I did was I, start, I started by creating a graph here, right? And then I started to add uh, edges to it. So when I add the, the first set of edges that I add, I loop through the recipients of my email, so for each of the recipients, I'm going to add an H, and then for each one of them, notice that I'm actually passing in a color, and then the same thing that, that I'm doing here, I'm looping through now, I'm loop, looping through the CC list. So every time I write an email, if I do CC some, somebody in that email, then uh, I want to loop through that as well, and then now I'm actually going to also apply a color, and I'm putting the color as green. So we, knowing that the knowing that all of knowing that all of this underlying infrastructure is actually dictionaries, this allows me to take advantage of that, and I can go in here and actually say get h attributes. And when I do that, um, I can I this is this is safe, right? I can safely use this get h attributes to retrieve the h attributes. Basically, when I say retrieve color, it's gonna go into a dictionary and it's gonna collect the color. So for each one of them, so there will be a color, maybe color equals to blue for each one of the recipients. So if I have four recipients, my first, second, third, fourth, they all gonna have a color of blue. And if I have, uh, let's say, uh, two person on my CC list, then I would have two um, green color edges. And I can, and because I, we, we talk about the insertion order, and now that now that uh, this is uh, in, in pattern 3.7 and above, I'm actually on pattern 3.8 right now. So I know that there is a guarantee on that insertion order, and I can count on that to work. And so when I call my function and when I call my plot, let's actually bring up the plot again, um, this one. So it would go ahead and do the right thing. So this is it's sending an email to Asim and it's uh, sending an email to Shav, uh, Shavon, but it would actually um, apply the right color here because it's now done in order. And this will not work in earlier versions of Python because there is no guarantee of which order it would become just as we seen before in earlier example. Okay, so in other words, we can safely use the get h attributes because we know that there is some guarantee about how uh, we would have the same h order in every run of graph ages. So it would it would it would go into a dictionary and it would uh, do it through that order. So that's it for another short tutorial on changes to dictionaries in Python 3.7. I hope you pick up something new, and I'll see you in the next video.